Have you ever been on your way to a big climactic battle at your arch nemesis doom fortress and then an old man and his wife have the gall to tell you have fun storming the castle and it would take a miracle? Well, after watching this video, you can look that old man in the eye and say, I will have fun and I don't need a miracle. I have a catapult. I have a battering ram. I have a gigantic ballista that fires more battering rams. Go ahead, cleric, put your feet up and relax. No miracles needed today. That's right. We have siege engines, and we're breaking down the walls and explaining how to bring these powerful contraptions to the table at your next Pathfinder 1e adventure. I'll go over general rules, different types of siege engines, and the rules for fortifications. But before we continue, if you're interested in taking your game further, join the D6 Damage Discord. We have fantastic discussions about all aspects of the game, character builds, strategy guides, and much, much more. You can find a link to the D6 Damage Discord in the description of this video. First up, what is a Siege Engine? In Pathfinder 1e, siege engines are powerful weapons and mobile structures used to assault fortifications or unleash death and destruction on the battlefield. With that in mind, let's talk about the things you're going to be besieging, namely structures. Siege engines can be used to assault infantry and cavalry, but against fortifications is where they're most in demand. So let's talk about the various targets for your engines of war. Like all items, structures have both hardness and hit points. They are based on the structure's type and the material that it's composed of. Also, when a structure gains the broken condition by losing half its hit points, its hardness is halved. The first type of structures are buildings. Buildings have high HP and low AC. A large building has an AC of 4, a huge building has an AC of 3, and a gargantuan building has an AC of 0. It is literally like hitting the broad side of a barn. The HP of a building is determined by its size and the material that it's made of. As an example, a large wooden building has 120 hit points. A huge stone building has 450 hit points. A gargantuan iron building has 3,200 hit points. A broken building is breached and can be entered. A building reduced to zero hit points collapses, and all creatures inside suffer a cave-in. Next, gates. Gates have AC based on their size. Large, AC 4. Huge, AC 3. Gargantuan, AC 0. The HP of a gate is based on its size and the material that it's composed of. A large iron gate has 200 hit points. A huge wooden gate has 135 hit points. A gargantuan stone gate has 400 hit points. Gates also have a strength DC to force them open. This is basically a break DC. This varies based on size and material. A large iron gate has a break DC of 24. A huge wooden gate has a break DC of 40. A gargantuan stone gate has a break DC of 48. Finally, we have walls. Walls come in 5 foot squares with an AC of 5 and a hardness as well as HP based on their type. Wooden walls have 30 HP, stone walls have 45, iron walls have 90, and adamant have 120. Now that you understand the structures that you'll be damaging, let's talk about the general rules for siege engines. First up, proficiency. Each type of siege engine is an exotic weapon. However, if you have proficiency in one siege engine and five ranks in knowledge engineering, as well as Profession Siege Engineer. You can take the Siege Engineer feat. This gives you proficiency with all siege engines, 
and you don't get a mishap, more on those in a bit, if you roll a nat 1 when attempting to use your siege engine. Next, crew. One member of the crew is the crew leader. This is typically the person who selects the target and controls the movement of the siege engine. Other members make relevant skill checks. Crew members are assumed to be medium size, but... Siege engines can be crewed by larger creatures, so if you happen to have a bunch of hill trolls hanging around, they can help you push your battering ram up to the gates of your enemy's city. Large creatures count as four medium creatures. A huge creature counts as eight, a gargantuan creature, 16, and a colossal creature, 20. Speed all siege engines have a movement speed, but some have a movement speed of zero. The speed is the distance the crew can move a single siege engine. If the speed is zero, it has to be disassembled. Next, construction. It takes a DC-20 craft siege engine check to craft and repair a siege engine. Assembly. Every type of siege engine requires a minimum number of assembly workers. Each assembly worker must make a DC-10 craft siege engine check to assemble the siege engine. Next, mishaps. Rolling a nat 1 results in a mishap. This mishap gives your siege engine the broken condition, which imposes a minus 2 penalty to attack rolls and damage rolls and halves the movement speed of the siege engine. If you have a firearm-type siege engine, it can misfire. These are things like cannons. A misfire is always a miss, and it gives your siege engine the broken condition. The misfire range of a broken siege engine increases by 4, so it becomes a 5. If you roll a 5 or lower when attempting to fire a broken siege engine, the defective siege engine will explode, dealing its damage in a 20-foot radius burst. Finally, let's talk about critical hits. Siege weapons can critically hit structures, unlike normal weapons. Now, let's break down the types of siege engines you have access to. First up, there's Close Assault. These weapons are designed for melee combat. First up, Rams. Rams are used to deal damage or make strength checks to break through structures. Your ram needs a ramming charge. The crew makes a charge action. Now, if you don't perform a ramming charge, your damage or strength check to break open a structure is done at a minus four penalty. Your ram can be used for a couple of things. First, breaking. The crew leader makes a strength check with a plus two bonus, and gains an additional plus two for each participating crew member. Also, rams above medium size category get a plus four size bonus. As an example, an orc with an 18 strength score and his three boys can make an attack on a gate with a large ram. The orc will get a plus 16 to his roll, a plus four from his strength, a plus two for using the ram, a plus six from his boys, and a plus four from the size of the ram. Rams can also be used to deal damage. This is based on their size. A large ram deals 2d6. A huge ram deals 3d8. A gargantuan ram deals 6d6. Rams can deal damage. This is based on their size. A large ram deals 2d6. A huge ram deals 3d6. A gargantuan ram deals 6d6, and a colossal ram deals 10d6. This is in addition to the strength modifiers of the crew. It has a hardness of 5 and HP based on its size. A large ram has 30 hit points. A huge ram, 120. Gargantuan, 320. And colossal, 625. Next, Siege Towers. This mobile tower provides protection for a complement of soldiers. Soldiers within the tower can fire out of it. A siege engine of the tower's size or smaller, such as a ballista, can be mounted on top. A broken siege tower moves at half its normal speed. 
If the tower is reduced to zero hit points, it collapses and all inside are treated as having suffered a cave-in. Siege towers have a hardness of 5 and HP based on their size. Large, 60 HP. Huge, 240 HP. Gargantuan, 640 HP. And Colossal, 1250 HP. Siege towers have crew and troops based on their size. A large tower has a crew of 6 and 5 soldiers. Huge, crew of 12 with a complement of 20 soldiers. Gargantuan, 25 crew with 50 soldiers. And a colossal Elden Ring siege tower requires 48 crew and can hold 200 soldiers. Now, let's move on to direct fire siege engines. Direct fire siege engines require a normal attack roll. Also, direct fire siege engines impose a minus two penalty per size category the siege engine is larger than the creature trying to fire it. That small goblin is going to have a hard time firing that colossal cannon. But fortunately for our goblin friend, this penalty can be mitigated with skill ranks in knowledge engineering, an aiming platform, or extra crew. Each additional crew reduces the penalty by two. One of the most common kinds of direct fire siege engine is the iconic ballista. This giant crossbow comes in three sizes, light, heavy, and the exciting sounding gatebreaker. Light ballista are large and deal 3d8 with a range of 120 feet. It requires one crew and has a speed of 10 feet. A heavy ballista is huge. It deals 4d8 damage with a range of 180 feet. It requires three crew and has a speed of zero. Finally, the gatebreaker is gargantuan. It fires battering rams. At a range of 100 feet that deal 6d8 damage. It requires a crew of 5 and has a speed of 0. Now let's talk about cannons. Cannons come in two varieties. First, the standard cannon, which is large and deals 6d8 of damage at a range of 100 feet. It has a misfire range of 1 and requires a crew of 2. Next, there's the profoundly awesome-looking Fiend's Mouth Cannon. The mouth of the cannon is sculpted in the form of the head of a demon, devil, or other monstrosity. This artillery piece is huge and deals 8 d6 damage and has a misfire range of 1 and requires a crew of 3. Finally, let's talk about indirect fire siege engines. These fire their shots in arcs in order to get their payload over obstacles and other potential impediments. To hit with an indirect fire siege engine, the crew leader must roll against the siege engine's DC using his BAB plus intelligence modifier or his BAB plus his knowledge engineering if he is trained in that skill. On a miss, if your attack roll hits with an indirect fire siege engine, roll a D8. A 1 represents falling short. So this shot faces the siege engine. Any other number, count in a clockwise direction from the 1 position, around the target. Then, roll a d4 for each range increment. 1 for first, 2 for second, etc. The total is how many squares the shot was off. So if you roll a 5, the shot went wide by 5 squares away from the position, indicated by the D8. The most iconic indirect fire siege engine is, of course, the catapult. Catapults come in three sizes, light, standard, and heavy. A light catapult has an aim DC of 15. It is size large. Its stones deal for D6 damage at a range of 150 feet. Light catapults require a crew of two and move at a speed of 10 feet. Next, standards. Aim DC 20. Size huge. Standard catapult stones deal 66 of damage at a range of 200 feet and require a crew of 3. They have a speed of 0. Finally, the heavy catapult. 
AIM DC-25, size gargantuan. Stones deal 8 D6 of damage at a range of 300 feet with a crew of 4 and a movement speed of 0. Catapults can be loaded with different kinds of ammunition, such as Alchemist Fire. This deals fire damage and the burning condition. Any creatures caught in the blast must make a DC-20 reflex save to not catch on fire. This blast radius is 5 feet out from the square that the alchemist fire hit. Everything within 30 feet of that target square must make a DC-20 reflex save to half the fire damage. But no burning condition. On a missed fire, this ammunition type explodes, hitting the crew. Alchemist fire ignores the hardness of wooden objects. Your next choice is bombs. Bombs deal 66 damage to creatures and objects within 30 feet on impact. Bombs ignore the hardness of wood and stone. Finally, for those protracted sieges, you have the plague bundle. This deals half damage, but all creatures hit are exposed to filth fever. Thank you very much for watching this guide to siege engines in Pathfinder 1E from D6 Damage. If you are in the market for game books, dice, and any other gaming paraphernalia, check out Noble Knight Games. You'll find a link in the description of this video. And if you're in the mood for a good old-fashioned haunted house adventure, check out Sorceress the Dietrich House, available right now on DriveThruRPG. Oh.